So let's go and understand now the functional scenario useful. Uh, now one thing is that if I want to do connection with your Eclipse to the backend, then I have to just double click in the connection and it will basically authenticate every time you start your Eclipse. So initially you can, when you start to create the project, then you will be basically connecting to the system. Okay, so that's how the setup is. Now let's move on to the functional scenario. So in the functional scenario, we have um, SNWD underscore S. So this is sales order header table. Now we have SNWO underscore SOI and it's D not O. So SNWD underscore SO underscore I, which is the line item for sales order. Then we have SNWD underscore BPA, which is the business partner data. And um, now we have SNWD underscore employees. And there's an S which you cannot see, but it is there. So this is your employees data. So all the employees data will be there. So now how the relationship is there between the table. So there's a end to one relationship from uh, employee to business partner. So employee basically maintain this business partner record. So this is the second one, which you will see here. So SNWD employee, the key relationship is node key. And in the business partner, we have changed by. So there will be a field in business partner called changed by, which will be having your end to one relationship with your employee. So employee basically maintains the business partner records. So in the same case, we have this third connection from sales order header to employees. So if you see here employees, there is node key again here and uh, here created by. So we will have created by here and in employee we have node key and there can be multiple sales order which can be created by one single employee. So this n is to one. So this is actually header table. So multiple sales order header. And um, it will be a little surprising that why node key is there because this is a development system. So most of the properties or fields are kept in mind for developers to do their work. So uh, in standard systems, you might have different fields there. You might have IDs there like sales order, header number, and those fields will be also present, but the relationship between different tables are with node key, parent key, as you can see here in item, we have parent key as well. So these are the typical way of relationship or foreign key relationship between different tables. And these are all client dependent tables. So as a key, you also have to mention the client number. So let's move to this one, this relationship between sales order header and business partner. And uh, we have end to one relationships for multiple sales order head. There will be one business partner and the relationship is basically node key in business partner and buyer GUID in the header. And in the fourth one, we have sales order header and item number. So both have one is to N. This is quite famous, which we'll be using a lot. And um, we will be basically using the relationship from node key of sales order header and parent key in item. So this is the foreign key fields which we have. Okay, so this is an overview. You can also look into it. If you go inside here and uh, go into this one table and this is the item table, I can basically see this graphically inside and um, I can basically find the relationship between here and I can see the foreign key of both of this table and what is the linkage between this. And here I can also see that how the relationship is. One is to one, one is to N and parent key relationship all can be identified from here. This is actually S E 11 transaction where I'm seeing this transparent table. Okay. So this is the architecture. Let's go in Eclipse and start writing our first CDS views in the next section.
Okay, so let's start the development. The first step we will be doing is creating a new project and this will be basically a BAP project. Let's select the system here, NetWeaver as a BAP and this is the name of the system which we have. And uh, this is the details of the system. As you can see here, this is basically the domain name. You can have your server IP as well and the system ID has been automatically taken up and um, I need to basically provide my username and password and um, let's finish it so we have the favorite where we have dollar temp as a local repository where we will be creating the core data services so this is the project so let's try to create our first CDS view and I will be basically writing it with SQL. I will say new and I will go into a BAP repository object as the CDS view will be going inside the BAP repository. Let's say core data and um, data definition. Now there will be some different ways where you can select the code which comes out as soon as the CDS views are created for you to start programming. Before that, I will have to give the package stamp and here the name. Say Z demo join 01 and uh, demo view 1. And um, here the next, if you basically mention here some package then this cds view will be going inside a transport request as i have mentioned their dollar temp so it basically takes them as local objects so now this is the templates which i was talking about you can use predefined templates to start from some place and not from scratch now it depends upon what is your preference but template will always help you to start from certain position and not really start from scratch for people who are really afraid about typos in programming and in those set i also come where i am terrified of doing some mistake as a typo or spelling mistake in the program templates can be extremely lifesaver in those situation where you start with some piece of code and not from scratch okay so let's start with view and uh, let's let's start with something very simple the first one define view let's try to use that and create this finish now we have this editor where if you have a syntax error then you can hover over here to understand what is the mistake to get a more detailed understanding or you can just press here to check development object as well now the first thing we will do here is uh, name the sql view differently so the name which we provided actually came here z underscore demo underscore join zero one this is the name of the view now we have to give the name of basically the sql view so z underscore view cds view and uh, i can say demo this shouldn't be more than 16 characters. So if I give a little more character here, then it will give me mistakes because uh, the maximum limit here is actually of 16 characters. So we have to be careful about that. The SQL name. Uh, now you can see that some of the syntax has been written in at the rate. They are annotations and we will basically see in details as well what are the functionality of annotation in the beginning we have two annotation to be focused on the first is abap catalog sql view name so this basically takes the name of the view so this is your view name and the second is end user text dot label so this annotation basically will contain what is the description we have given when we were creating this cds view Okay, so what we will be doing here is we will be using the connection between the table employees and um, your sales order header. 
and we will be trying to create our first CDS view with a inner joint. And uh, here we have the node key and this node key will be related to your sales order header with created by. So if we see the ER diagram again, we have to go and see the ER diagram or the graphical representation for the relationship in the sales order header table here. If you go into display and we see here, then this is the link which we have to basically use and create an inner joint. So the inner joint will be returning the result which are present both in your employee and sales order header table. So let's try to do that. So first we will be using this table name and uh, the syntax is very simple. Define view, view name as select from and here we have the table name here snw underscore so. Now what we have to do next is we have to mention the second table with the inner joint keyword. So we'll say inner join and uh, the second table name will be your employee table. So I will just get the name here employees and uh, copy it and we will be basically putting it here now once we say inner join then the second table is this we will have to do this inner join over a field or multiple fields but I will be basically doing it over one field on and uh, that field is going to be the node ID of your employee and the sales order header it will be created by and uh, if the created by as you can see here as soon as I enter full stop or dot here I get a search help and that is going to be very helpful in development with CDS views you will be able to get all the fields inside the table values and uh, you can use it in the program and not only this you can basically chain it as well for example if created by have a structure then I can even have a dot here and go inside that so that we will be seeing in coming few sections as well so here the second table name this can be structure as well not only the table so here the field is node key now what I would like to be present in this view I will have to mention inside this bracket so I will say sales order ID so that is going to be one thing which I need and I will be also going to have maybe some financial details cross amount and um, in the employees we will be going to have first name and uh, we will also have email address and also we will have the last name we can bring the last name just after first name and that's all so let's keep our structure with only these fields and um, as you can see that if there is some syntax error then we will have that particular highlighted and here you can also see what is the error we are missing a comma here so once I add the comma then everything is all okay there is no error and um, I will save it with Control S and go for activation here. Control F3 is the shortcut here to activate and uh, there are a few warnings but no errors. To run it to see the report I will have to press F8 and uh, you can see the final output here and um, we have the sales order ID, gross amount, first name, last name and email address in a view 
which is built with codata services and this is also present inside a bab repository and now the view here is part of your dictionary a bab dictionary so if i select the view name and i go to navigate and navigate to or i just press f3 then i will be navigated to my sap system where the structure i can see so this is the cool part where i can see the view name this is the view name which i have and um, as you can see here the name of the view which i gave here sql view name is basically a dictionary structure ddl sql view and the ddl source is this view so if you are using this view again to create one more cds view which we will do in association as well then i will be using this name which is the view name and if i'm using it inside or using as as a structure then i will be using sql view name here so these are two different names now this is something which we have not seen in our calculation or attributes or analytical view those were not part of the ABAP repository the cds views are part of ABAP repository now if this is your first cds view development then i hope that you will be very happy to see your cds view or a view inside your hana database repository and um, we can do a lot of things once we have view present inside the bap repository we can use it in a bap programs we can use function or functionalities inside your cds views to extract data and use it in a bap program we can also expose the cds views with annotation as a odata service which we will see in the coming section as well so this is the first part where we understood a basic cds view creation now we will be seeing how to implement some of the advanced features in cds views in the next section so in the previous section we created this cds view and um, what the cds view does it is a simple inner join between employee and sales order header data we also see in the system how the cds view is present in sc11 transaction what extra we can actually see is if i go into the cds view name and i go to navigate and uh, navigate to we will be able to see the sql representation or the equivalent of this particular table creation so if i go into menu extras and create statement then it shows me a sql syntax which is equivalent of our cds view if i would like to create this table structure with sql okay so that is one extra thing in our extra now what we will be doing in this section is i would be showing you that i can use the cds view inside a abap report to basically display the output just a simple thing but the point would be that you can use the cds views inside your abap report using open sql so i will be able to write select statements using this views and get the data inside abap program and um, i will be not doing much i will be just displaying the data but once you get the data inside your ABAP program, then you can basically do operations which are related to ABAP. Now, to do that, let's create a simple report. I will say new ABAP program and uh, let's name it Z. Demo report 01 is already existing, so we'll set it 02. Demo SO and employees. And this is part of the temp package local object so i will not be having any transport here and let's finish it so that's the report now the first thing which we will be doing is defining a internal table and i will be saying so emp cds view and uh, here it will be a type standard table of our view which is this one and uh, let me close this too 
which we are not using. I will be using this SQL view name inside my BAP program in the annotations what we have in the line number one. Now, as this CDS view doesn't have a key, I have to mention with empty key. I can also have in the definition itself of the CDS view some field declared as key, but um, I will do it later or we'll see that later. Now, this is saved, so I need to activate it. Let's come back to our report here. And uh, once I do that, I will be writing simple select statement. And this select statement is open SQL written in ABAP select star from our view name. This is the view name into table. And this is the table. Very simple. So we are just kind of selecting all the data from the view, CDS view into the table. And um, you can also use at the rate data if you have not defined the data, if you have not declared it in the top, then you can directly declare it with this syntax. Now I'm not going to basically use data here, but I'm going to use at the rate as per the syntax. Now I will be calling a method inside the class CL underscore demo underscore output and uh, we will be using a static method called display inside this and the display basically takes two parameters one is data the other is name the data is the internal table and the name is a description and um, we'll be using that And uh, for us, it will be exporting inside this particular report. Exporting and um, it will be data, which is going to be the internal table. And uh, we will be having the name as a description. Sales order and employees list. That's all. I think that's a simple report. I'll not be doing anything fancy. The point is that we use Open SQL here and um, are able to basically get the data of CDS view. So this is the whole point of this particular simple report. Now let's activate it. And once it's activated, we'll be running it by pressing F8 and uh, it will take a few seconds to give a output in a new pop-up window. So let's wait for it. Now it took a few seconds, 10 to 15 seconds just to display this because what happens is the data actually get extracted and is written in this new window. So it takes a few seconds, but we can see the final output of the data here in this new windows and this is our simple description. Now, the whole point of creating this report is that with the open SQL, we will be having access to the CDS where we can get the data and do our operation in a BAP report. We'll be seeing more about this as well. We'll be using a lot of BAP to use our CDS views data as well. Just for now, we will be working and uh, trying to see more functionalities which are exposed to us in the view creation phase in our CDS view. Welcome back. In the previous section, we started with the CDS view. We created the CDS views. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to basically try to add one more join here. And I will also introduce you to alias. So alias in the output. So these are all the elements, data elements, which will be exposed via the CDS view. 
we can also have alias in the select statement so i can say select from so the sales order header table as in wd underscore so as some alias and i can then use this alias everywhere instead of using this table name so in this particular example the table name are not that complicated so we might not need alias most of the time we do it for table name which are complicated or hard to understand now also i can basically give a name to this particular field which i am sending out as a structure or adding to the structure in this select so i can also say as header item so i can also do that and uh, the column will be called header item in the final structure as well so let's try to do that first i will try to do a additional inner joint in this particular structure it's better to create a new structure so basically when i give you in the handbook i can give you this example to practice as well so let's try to create a new about repository object i will basically follow the same steps core data services and here data definition z demo zero one we have so i will just say zero two z underscore demo underscore zero one underscore zero two and demo sales order we have e employee and uh, now we will be also adding the business partner here now this is going to be put in local object so i can directly finish not to go in the transport screen okay so now this is the code i can copy some part of the code here from here to here let's copy this and um, i will be putting it here select from so basically we have a header table we are joining with inner join so whatever common in both of these table will be actually displayed so if two tables are there and this has three fields and this has three fields only the fields which match with the criteria which i am showing here will be basically displayed in inner join now this should be coming first yeah this is coming first and then this is next now what i'm going to add is on top of this particular output i will be having a left outer join so what is a left outer join for example we are having a table and we are trying to put a left outer join to table 2 then all the fields in the first table if they are found in the second table then the join will happen if based on the joining condition of course and if there is no match in the second table then the first table data will be taken into output and the second table data will be null there basically it will not be existing so the left outer joint is done in a scenario where we have to have the left table data and um, if some value we find from the right hand side table then add it if the value doesn't exist then still add the left hand side value so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say left outer join on table s i will be taking example of business partner i will be adding the table business partner here let's see what is the name of the table snwd underscore bpa so let's come back here sn wd underscore bpa and uh, i will be saying on when my sales order is so there is a buyer id inside sales order header and uh, this buyer g uid global user and an id once this buyer gu id is equal to the business partner node key 
then do the left outer join and i will be saying node key so from the business partner table i will basically take the id of the business partner and um, maybe i can take one more field as well which is going to be maybe some field similar to created at um, maybe email address and um, i can also give it a alias in the output as the column name will be different here so business let's keep it small business underscore partner id and here i can also mention here as email so this is how the output name is changed this is somewhat readable the bp id is not unreadable but if you have some unreadable column types then you can give alias and the use of alias we will also see in the coming few section where they can be utilized as well